If you're walking or driving across a bridge that goes over the Titaboasi River at this time of year, you're likely to see this sight. 20, 30, 50, and sometimes even 100 ice fishermen out there just feet away from the flowing river current, and they are catching walleye. Some dandy walleye, big walleye, right here from the Titabawasi River system flowing into Saginaw Bay. Some excellent walleye fishing, some perch fishing, too, that we did. I'm going to take you along, so join me, Fred Trost. It's Thursday night, time to go perch fishing on Michigan Outdoors. Well, here we go, Bob, ice fishing out on Saginaw Bay. This is one of the trips I enjoy taking the bronc out on the ice like this. I really do with, if you have four-wheel drive, chances of getting stuck are fairly slim. And with 16, 18 inches of ice, I'm not worried about it. No, and, and they have been driving on that ice for uh, two to three weeks anyway, and we were following some people that, uh, that uh, definitely knew their way around it. Of course, you had a few reservations about it. Well, anytime you go out on the ice, you, you, you want to make sure you're safe. And uh, I had less reservations following people that had done it for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks, though. Well, this, this, was, this is the way to go, I think, if you can take your car out on the ice, if it's thick enough, if it's safe, which right now after this warm weather, I doubt it. But this was, this was uh, shot just before we had all that melting. And, of course, on, on an open bay like this where the wind is whipping, it is extremely handy to have some type of protection. And an ice shanty is ideal. It protects you from all sides, and you can run a heater in here as well. And a portable shanty like this, this is really the berries, I well, think. Well, it's a simple shanty, too. Just with, with that canvas there, it allows you to take it anywhere. Of course, uh, half of the bottom of the shanty is a plywood board, and this half comes out because we're going to bore some holes in the ice and fish right in the shanty. If you have an old chainsaw, uh, you can cut a, a spearing type of hole in the ice, a big rectangle, but for perch fishing, all you need is some round holes, six or eight inches, and of course you can't beat a power auger oh. for drilling those holes. But that ice was so thick that uh, if they got four or five more inches, they would have had to had to get extensions on those power augers. Right. The, a lot of the anglers who fish Saginaw Bay all winter long do have extensions for their augers because the ice sometimes, it's, it's been recorded as, as thick as three feet. <laughs> Incredible. And it's about half that uh, thickness today, but we have the, the holes moved, the shanty over the holes, and now the heater. Hold your ears, guys. There we go. We got that going in the shanty. The gas bottle, of course, is kept on the outside. And, Bob, this is where you literally hold up for the day. I sure did. That wind was kind of bitter, and that was, a, that was the warmest, nicest place on the whole bay. Now, there were some folks out there who must have had plenty of long underwear who <laughs> didn't have... Uh, protection, and they were catching fish, that particular group was, and our little shanty town here uh, took quite a few. We have people who are, use their vehicles uh -huh. to either stay behind or like this fellow, he gave me the idea, so I just, I got in the bronc and I uh, turned the motor on and got the heat going. And and you, caught, I caught a little perch. And you caught the smallest perch of the day. I think I did, just about. <laughs> but I tell you, there were some, there were some nice ones taken, there although they were running fairly small. Now, the fishing, you know, goes back and forth, <laughs> and maybe two or three days out of the week it'll be hot, and it's hard to predict when it will. But uh, that is a nice perch. Good eating, and sometimes they get into the jumbos. That's what everybody's looking for, the 12, 14 inchers. These fellows here have a tip-up set on Saginaw Bay. Kind of unusual to have to find out what they're fishing for. Got the pretty good mess of perch. Two of you's in here, huh? Whoa, this is really nice. Yeah, we're getting a few. What, what are you heating? What are you heating in that stove? Uh, wood, oak. Just wood? Okay, yeah. yeah, it smells different than than the gas out here when you're behind a shanty. Yeah. Holy cow, have you guys got little minnows? Look at these, OJ. Yeah, well, we're doing a double hook. These, Got, Double hooking them? Yeah, I got a Swedish pimp on the bottom, and then up about six inches, I got a number, about a number, well, what would it be? Probably a number six hook. Okay. And you've been doing, oh, you got one now? Nope. Yep, away. nope. nope. <laughs> There's a lot of yep, nope out here. <laughs> let's see that rig that you have. Well, let's Pull it out basically here. Basically, what we're doing, if you can get her separated there, I put a Swedish pimp on the bottom, and uh -huh. then. Uh, and then a hook, out, uh, about a number eight, there. number ten hook? Yeah, or what, that, about six, isn't it? Somewhere Something there. like that. Yeah. And you just jig it. Just jig it. It seems to be doing pretty good for us. Yeah, well you got, uh, oh, it looks like maybe 
30 or so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Fred, we've, uh, we've been doing good for the last two weeks. Real good out here. There. There we go. Oh, we got one coming here. Oh, Jay? Just a little. Should I make way? Is it a huge one? No, just a little wimp. <laughs> a little one? Oh, hey, there's one. <laughs> ah. You're not keeping that size, are you? No, no. A bit too small to fillet. Yeah. We've been here a half hour ago, hey? <laughs> well, now, what's the story here, Brad? Is your dad getting all of the big ones? Yeah. Most of them? Yeah. I never catch nothing too big. <laughs> is that right? He always, get, he always beats me. Why is that, Pop? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he holds his mouth right. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, he's yawning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he sleeps a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you got one, Brad? Yeah. Well, okay. Yep, same Let's size. see. Nothing show it out. Show us the. Everybody wants know. to see. Now that's a little bigger. A little bit. That's <laughs> bigger than pops. A little bit. <laughs> and he threw it back. Have Brad and Bernie Hebert, father and son team. Great way to spend the day. And they really did load up on the perch. But you know the technique, Bob. And it was interesting. I saw this in Tom Opry's column. Mm -hmm. I think it was last week. Jiggle the bait a little bit, jiggle the lure, and then let it set because that's when the perch hit, when it's sitting, and then give it another jiggle. But don't be moving that bait too much. Oh, I think we, we found that out. We had to kind of hold that bait steady and let them come up and take it. You know oh, come on. Did I lose the line there? Oh, he's over in my hole. Come on. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I thought he was going to be a huge one. I had such great expectations. Well, you always have big expectations, Bob, uh, for these perch. A lot of them are small, but uh, here's Gail. Gail Bador from uh, Gail's Bait and Tackle up at Quantica. He's huh? got the touch. Hey, this isn't too bad. I'm still still sticking it out here to the bitter end, uh, seeing if I can get one more, but dump them out there. We got some nice ones. They got a few more left in there. Do they? Yeah. Well, that's a heck of a mess. Well, I don't know. They were, they were hitting today. But well, yeah, we got some nice ones there. Bob made a good mess of fish. The day when, it, when you're done fishing, uh, the nice thing about these portable shanties is you can take them right down. And all kinds of shanties are out there. Uh, this is a homemade one on a snowmobile sled. There's a lot of folks who go out there, fellas, who go by themselves. Mm -hmm. And they can put these up. They have their heater, their gas bottle, auger on the front, snowmobile, even a CB radio, the whole works. They spend all day out there like, uh, like you would in a deer blind opening day or whatever. Right, a lot of fun. You know, we had to head back. Now, with the Bronco across the ice, and sometimes uh, in the winter you do encounter problems on Saginaw Bay, this is the classic right here, the pressure crack. Sometimes pressure cracks open up. It's caused from the wave action out in the open water in the bay. Here we have a pressure crack that had been opened and then closed, causing the ice to jam up. A potentially dangerous situation, of course, if that whole ice flow mm -hmm. breaks off. We even had some water. This wasn't open water right here, but it's water that had come up during the day through the ice. But that was not there in the morning when we crossed over it. No, it sure wasn't. Adds a little adventure. Well, you have to just find a safe place to cross. Uh, be forever on the lookout for those pressure cracks. Now, people were probably going to get some letters on this. We're nuts for doing this and showing it on TV. But here's, but look at this. Mm -hmm. Bob, this is fishing on the Tetabawasi River where they're really slamming the walleye. And for the faint-hearted, this type of fishing isn't suitable either, but uh, it's a good way to catch walleye, and the ice is thick enough on the side of the river where the current isn't so stiff. Everything I've been told, Ian Scott, is that uh, the fishing picks up about 5 o'clock, well, and here you are leaving. Uh, Got to go home for supper. Oh, do you? <laughs> you having walleye for supper? Uh, no, not tonight, tomorrow night. Okay, well, you're, you're about three short of your limit here today, but these are nice walleye. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what, what, how do you catch them? Uh, jigging with a jig and with a minnow on it. Well, let's see which one. You have two rigs here, I see. This is the one that uh, caught these two? Right. That's, uh, Looks like a little Cleo. A little or Cleo. Oh, that's what it is. A little blue and white Cleo. And uh, you put a minnow on it and uh, split shot to hold it down. I see, because there's quite a current in the Right, river. quite a current, yeah. Hmm. If you don't have no weight on it, well, just bellies out under the ice and you don't reach the fish. Now, how, how much line do you let out? Uh, approximately 10 foot. So not very far? No, no. And how do these walleye battle? Uh, they put up quite a fight in the current. Well, that gives them a little help. Oh, yeah, quite a little help. 
Now, have you have you caught walleye here quite a few times before? No, this is my first time here. No kidding? Right. Yeah. Okay, these are a nice walleye. How long have you been here? Uh, since uh, about two o'clock. So in three hours you picked up two walleye. Yeah, and I lost three. So. Oh, did you? Oh yeah. How come? Well, <laughs> you don't catch them all. <laughs> How are the other people doing? Uh, every once in a while a guy gets one. Morning and evening are best for walleye. Perch seem to do best during the daylight hours, a perfect combination for a Saginaw Bay ice fishing day in Michigan outdoors.